everyone in the previous class we discussed about the application of uh, rock mass classification system that is uh, RMR uh, in the case of the underground excavation design and uh, today we will take up some aspects related to tunnel hazards and then we will try to connect it with uh, another classification system which is the rock mass quality that is Q system. So, before we go to that, we have already discussed about the ground conditions uh, in lecture number 9 of this course and then tunneling conditions in lecture number 10. We also discussed about the general categories of ground behavior types and uh, the comparison between swelling and squeezing phenomena in lecture number 10. So, when we discuss about the tunnel hazards, I will be referring to some of the terms that we discussed in lectures 9 and 10 and if you have forgotten that, maybe you can refer back to uh, these two lectures of the same course. So, quality aspects uh, which are related to tunnel collapse that is what that we are going to discuss. So, various types of uh, tunnel collapse uh, have been considered here and uh, corresponding to each type the phenomena has been explained and what was the cause of that type of collapse that is also there and what all are the remedial measures which are to be adopted is also mentioned. So, we are going to discuss these in detail before we go to the Q system. So, the first one is related to the ground collapse and then the ground collapse can also be for different categories. So, we take the various types of this. So, first we discuss the type when uh, the ground collapses near the portal. We you know what the portal is, we have discussed it in uh, some of the earlier uh, classes. So, what is the phenomena that takes place when the ground collapses near the portal? So, during the excavation of the upper half section of the portal, the tunnel collapsed and the surrounding ground it just slid to the river side. So, the ground collapse was caused by the increase of the pore water pressure due to rain for 5 consecutive days. So, in case such uh, situation occurred, so this caused this type of uh, phenomena resulting into this type of the ground collapse. So, what was the remedial measure that was adopted? That was the installation of anchors to prevent the landslides and then construction of counterweight embankments which can also prevent the landslides. Then installation of pipe roofs to strengthen the loosened crown is also one of the remedial measure to handle such type of ground collapse. Now, the second type of ground collapse include the landslide near the portal. So, in this case what happens that the cracks appeared in the ground surface during the excavation of the side drift of the portal and the slope near the portal uh, gradually collapsed. So, the cause of this phenomena was uh, the excavation of the toe of the slope composed of strata which was uh, disturbed by the stability of soil and the excavation of the side drifts basically loosened this uh, natural ground which uh, resulted to the landslide. So, the remedial measure which can be adopted uh, for this situation was uh, uh, the caisson type pile foundations were constructed uh, to prevent this uh, unsymmetrical ground pressure and uh, the vertical reinforcement bars were driven into the uh, ground to increase its strength. The third type of ground collapse included the collapse of the crown of cutting face. Uh, this included the phenomena that 10 to 30 meter cube of soil it collapsed and uh, the supports which were provided it settled during the excavation of the upper half section. Uh, the cause of this phenomena was uh, that the ground loosened and the collapse had took place due to the presence of heavily jointed fractured rock mass 
at the crown of the cutting phase and the vibration that is caused by the blasting for the lower half section case of the hard rock. The remedial measure which were adopted in such situation was that the roof bolts were driven into the ground to stabilize the tunnel crown and to strengthen the ground near the portal and talus the chemical injection and installation of vertical reinforcement bars uh, were uh, conducted. Coming to the fourth category of the ground collapse that is collapse of the fault fracture zone. So, you see that all these are falling under the category of ground collapse, but then these are all different components and they have to be treated in the different manner. So, the phenomena that took place when the collapse of the fault fracture zone takes place is that, that after the completion of blasting and mucking flaking of the sprayed concrete occurred behind the cutting phase following which 40 to 50 meter cube of soil collapsed along the 7 meter section from the cutting phase and later it was extended to 13 meter from the cutting phase and the of course the volume of the collapsed soil will also increase and it reached as high as 900 meter cube. So, the cause for this uh, type of phenomena was uh, that the, the fault fracture zone above the collapsed cutting phase, it loosened due to blasting and excessive concentrated load were imposed on the supports causing the shear failure and collapse of the sprayed concrete. So, which was provided as uh, the support as a layer of concrete or the short crete. So, that was uh, failed. The remedial measure which uh, was adopted was that uh, reinforcement of the supports behind the collapsed uh, section that means uh, additional sprayed uh, concrete and additional rock bolting is to be done. Then addition of the number of the measurement section. Uh, See when we go for the excavation one needs to go for instrumentation as well as the monitoring. So, one can go for the large number of sections uh, which are instrumented and the monitoring uh, can take place. So, hardening of the collapsed rock mark by the chemical injection was also one of the remedial measure and then air milk injection into the voids above the collapsed portions then use of the supports uh, having the higher strength. Then the next category of the failure is uh, the distortion of the supports. So, the type include here is the distortion of the tunnel supports, the phenomena that can take place which causes this distortion of the tunnel supports is that during the excavation by the full phase tunneling method steel supports considerably settled and foot protection concrete it just got cracked. So, the cause of this was that the bearing capacity of the ground at the bottom of the supports it reduces uh, due to the prolonged immersion by ground water. We all know that the bearing capacity of the foundation or the shear strength parameter of the ground how they reduce if they are exposed to the ground water. So, similar type of the cause was there to trigger this phenomena. Uh, the permanent foot protection concrete was placed to reduce the concentrated load and an invert with drainage was uh, placed so that uh, if there is a release of the pore water pressure it will help. Uh, the second category under the distortion of the supports include the distortion of the lining concrete due to unsymmetrical ground pressure. The phenomena that took place was that, that the during the excavation of the upper half section, the horizontal cracks appeared which were ranging in width from 0.1 to 0.4 mm in the arch portion of the mountain side concrete lining while the subsidence took place on the valley side. 
So, this landslide uh, was caused due to steep topography with asymmetric pressure and the ground with lower strength, uh, all these leading to the oblique load on the concrete lining. So, the remedial measures which were adopted include earth anchors uh, driven into the mountain side ground to withstand the oblique load and the ground around the tunnel was strengthened by chemical injection and uh, therefore, the subsequent location was uh, filled. The third category of the distortion of supports include the distortion of tunnel supports due to swelling pressure. So, wherever this kind of situation will come, uh, wherever you have the minerals which have the tendency to expand in volume in the presence of the uh, moisture or the water. So, there uh, you will uh, observe this type of the uh, tunnel collapse. The reason was that the, the phenomena that took place was the hexagonal cracks appeared in the sprayed concrete and the bearing plates for rock bolts were distorted due to sudden inward uh, movement of the side walls of the tunnel being the swelling ground condition. Now, in this case what, uh, what is the cause? Here it is very obvious that there was large uh, swelling pressure uh, which was generated because of the presence of uh, swelling clay minerals in mudstone. So, the remedial measure which was adopted uh, included uh, the sprayed concrete and face support bolts on the cutting face to prevent the weathering and then a temporary invert was also placed in the upper half section by spraying the concrete. Then the next category of the distortion of the support include uh, the heaving of a tunnel in service. So, this heaving occurred in the pavement surface 6 months after the commencement of the service. This caused cracking and faulting in the pavement and the heaving reached as high as 25 centimeters. So, you can imagine that the uh, when the heaving takes place it is as large as 25 centimeters. So, obviously the cracks are going to come. Uh, the cause for this uh, type of phenomena was that a fault fracture zone containing swelling clay minerals which was subjected to hydrothermal alteration it existed in the distorted section and there was the plastic ground pressure which was caused by this fracture zone which was concentrated on the base course of the weak tunnel section without invert. So, wherever the invert was not provided the base course of the weak tunnel section there was the fracture uh, zone. So, the remedial measure which was adopted uh, was to first the restrict the plastic uh, ground uh, pressure and for this the rock bolts were provided and uh, the concrete uh, was sprayed and this was applied to the soft sandy soil beneath the uh, base course and in this case the reinforced uh, invert concrete uh, was also placed. Now, the third category involves the adverse effects on the uh, surrounding environment and the type corresponding to this is uh, the adverse effect of vibration due to blasting on the adjacent existing tunnel. So, let us say there is one tunnel and you are going for the another one in the vicinity of that and for that you have to go for the blasting. So, once the blasting takes place vibrations are going to be generated and that will influence uh, the adjacent existing tunnel. So, during the construction of a new tunnel which was to run parallel to the side wall of the existing portal, the cracks appeared in the lining which was made of bricks of the existing tunnels. The cause behind this was uh, the voids uh, behind the existing tunnel uh, loosened and the lining was distorted due to the vibration of the blasting for construction of the new tunnel. So, the remedial measures which were adopted uh, uh, was that the provision of uh, steel supports and temporary concrete uh, lining to protect the existing tunnel, 
then backfill grouting was also carried out uh, then the excavation was carried out by non blasting rock breaking method and the limit for the chemical agent was uh, set to mitigate the vibration. Uh, the second category under this type is uh, the ground settlement due to the excavation for dual tunnel directly beneath the residential area. So, uh, this is uh, very very uh, crucial and risky. This is uh, the phenomena took place as the considerable distortion of the support it occurred in the embankment section. Although additional bolts were driven into the ground and additional sprayed concrete was also provided, but then still the ground surface settlement exceeded uh, 100 mm and just imagine that in case if this high ground surface settlement is there and uh, residential area are there, what will happen? So, the cause behind this phenomenon was uh, that since the soil characteristic in the embankment section were worse than the expected, the ground settlement was considerably increased by the construction of the tunnels following the dual tunnel. So, in this case the remedial measure which was adopted included the uh, driving of pipe roofs from inside the tunnel to reduce the uh, ground surface settlement. This was all about uh, some of the tunnel hazard. Now, I will connect some of these situation to the next rock mass classification system which is the Q system. So, we have uh, the empirical approaches first for the prediction of the ground condition. So, one of such criteria was given by Singh et al in uh, 1992. So, they mentioned that uh, there is going to be the presence of the squeezing ground condition if H is much larger than 350 times Q to the power 1 by 3 meters. What is H here is the depth of the overburden or um, height of the overburden and uh, the depth of the tunnel top from the ground surface. Q be the rock mass quality. In case of the non squeezing ground condition, you will have this condition satisfied that H will be much less than 350 times Q to the power 1 by 3. Again, this is in meter. So, for computing the Q, the SRF rating of 2.5 should be used. Kindly recall our discussion on uh, the computation of Q. Uh, if you uh, look back to the some of the previous lectures, you will realize that you needed uh, 6 parameters uh, and the corresponding rating for uh, computation of Q. So, there one factor was SRF stress reduction factor. So, its rating will be assigned as 2.5 uh, for the computation of Q. Uh, further, the ratio of horizontal to vertical in situ stress uh, should also be accounted for. Uh, further, Goel et al uh, gave the criterion using the rock mass number n in 1995. Now, this rock mass uh, number n is nothing but the value of Q when you have SRF to be equal to 1. So, N is nothing but Q for SRF rating to be equal to 1. The other parameters which are coming into picture include the tunnel depth H and the tunnel width B. Now, this data from the various sites, these were plotted on log log graph between N and H into B to the power point 0.1 where B is uh, more than the size of self supporting tunnels. Now, what are these self supporting tunnels? We will discuss little later, but the name is self explanatory that the ground conditions are very good. So, you do not need typically um, very good support system for uh, such tunnels. So, just nominal some support system is needed. 
So this uh, this was the plot which was uh, given uh, by these research workers. So you can see that on the x axis we have the rock mass number. What is this rock mass number? It is Q when SRF equal to 1 or the rating for SRF is 1. So this is plotted on the x axis using the log scale and another quantity that is h into b to the power 0 0.1 is plotted on y axis again this is on log scale. So, basically it is log log uh, plot. So, a uh, lot of data related to the prediction of the ground conditions were plotted on to this. Uh, and then uh, clear cut uh, few demarcations have been made. For example, if the point or if the situation is lying below the line C A, then it is self supporting tunnel. In case if it is between C A and B A, it is non squeezing ground condition. If it is between D E and B A, it is minor squeezing followed by the severe squeezing if the point falls between F G and D E and beyond F G, it is very severe squeezing. Plus, they also came out with the situation where if the point lies in this rectangular zone on the top right portion of this plot, then there is the prediction of mild rock burst with j r upon j greater than 0.5. So, let us understand these things in more detail. So, a uh, clear line a b is there, see this is a b is there which is demarcating squeezing and non squeezing ground condition. Okay. The equation of this is uh, h is equal to 275 n to the power 0.3 b to the power minus 0.1 in meters. Please remember we are dealing with the empirical approaches and so the units are going to be extremely extremely important. So, both h and b they will be in meter. For the squeezing ground condition h should be greater than this obviously see here beyond this uh, it is the squeezing ground condition and j r upon j must be less than or equal to 0.5 where j r is the joint roughness number and j a be the joint alteration number. If you want to know the definition of these and uh, how uh, these are assigned the values uh, based upon the field situation, maybe you can refer back to our discussion uh, of the classification system of rock mass q, q system. Uh, for the non squeezing ground condition it should be less than uh, this expression again in meter. So, this equation explains why a drift cannot represent the ground condition in the main tunnel. You know that uh, the drift is uh, uh, the small tunnel that is uh, driven uh, to ascertain some of the geological conditions. So, drift is basically smaller in size and it will not experience as much squeezing as uh, the larger main tunnel because you see that here the size of the excavation comes into picture. So, therefore, we cannot uh, say that drift will represent the typical and proper ground condition for the main tunnel. So, you need to be extremely careful about it. So, this was uh, all about uh, the squeezing and the non squeezing ground condition and how using these empirical approaches you can demarcate between uh, these uh, ground conditions. So, in the next class uh, we will uh, continue with the discussion and we will study some aspects related to uh, squeezing ground condition. Thank you very much.